Hello and welcome to this new Hostify video. My name's Alex and today we're going to do a full complete setup of Unify Network using Hostify. So I have a UXT Pro, a US8 150 watt switch and a Unify AC Lite access point. We're going to get all three of those devices connected to our Hostify controller and go through the entire process. We're also going to set up a guest VLAN and guest SSID complete with speed limiting so I'll show you how to do that as well. So before we move any further this is the wiring setup of how everything's set up. Very crude uh, diagram. We've got the UXT Pro at the top here. One WAN connection out to my main network so it's double natted and then a connection between the US8 150 watt switch and then a connection to the AC light. It's a very simple uh, bog standard setup. Uh, it could be easily replicated with other devices as well. So you can see I've got the UXG Pro set up. I've also got the Unify switch and Unify, Unify access point in factory default mode. You'll know when they're in factory default mode, the fact that they'll be glowing white. So on the switch and the AP, the LEDs are glowing white. On the UXG Pro, the little LCD screen will say pending adoption. This will also apply to the USG as well, so USG and USG Pro. However, for future deployments and to get the best experience, we at Hostify would recommend the UXG Pro for a much more complete setup. So I've got my iMac plugged into one of the ports on the Unify switch. It's getting DHCP from the UXG Pro, so we're going to log into the interface of that now. So the default IP address for the UXG Pro is 192.168.1.1. On Safari, there's a warning to say this website may be an issue, but you could ignore this and go straight ahead. So we've got the UXG Pro in front of us. We do have a full in-depth video on the channel explaining the whole setup of the UXG Pro, but we will go over it over it now. So just for some clarity, I've got my Hostify controller set up. There's no devices on here yet. It's got the host name in the address address bar, and we're going to get everything adopted to the controller. So I've got the UXG Pro window open. It says choose a device name. We're going to pick UXG Pro, click agree. The advanced setup is to choose if you want a different internet type. So at the moment, I've got a DHCP network plugged into this, but we can specify what the local IP range is, which is actually quite actually quite good. We can also pick static IP address. You've got a public, if you've got a public IP address from your ISP, you can even pick which which uh, interface the WAN port is on. So you can put uh, put those details in there if you need to, and even specify a data VLAN, which is quite cool. Other setup options: PPPoE, so that's username and password. So if you're given a username and password from your ISP, like an email address for the username, just a random password, you can put those in there and even again choose a VLAN, which is quite cool. But we're going to pick with DHCP. So again, we can even pick a VLAN again. We're going to say configure console for DHCP, which is what it's doing now. So it says we are connected to the internet and we're going to go to the next step now. So again, pick the name. We're going to click next. We can put our details in, but we're going to actually proceed without an account. So for the next step, we need to connect our UXG Pro to the host of our controller. So we've already covered this in a, in a full video, link is in the description below and in the top right hand corner where you can learn how to set up the UXG Pro by itself and connect it to a Hostify controller. So on our, on our written guide, again link is down below, you can use, it says to use port 8443, so you typically use 8080 but for the UXG Pro only it's 8443. So the fully qualified domain name we can find from our Hostify controller under settings then system and then under the advanced section there is the controller inform host. We're going to copy that and put that in the UXG Pro. Port's fine. Username and password will be the username and password from here. So the password is from there. We're going to copy that and paste that in. Press next. So it's now connected to the network application. It's going to pick a site we want to link it to. So it's connected to our host file controller. We're going to say unify complete setup. That's our site which is quite a nice feature. Click on next. So it's going to connect out to the controller and we can probably go back to the Unify controller and the UXG Pro is now getting ready. So it says setup complete. You can now manage your network from anywhere. And we're going to close that tab now and wait for the UXG Pro to adopt. So after about 30 seconds, the UXG Pro went to online. It's now getting ready again. Right, and what's happened now is because the US8 switch and the UAPAC light are plugged into the LAN network of the UXG Pro, the UXG Pro has started to add the devices to our controller, so we don't actually need to SSH into those devices at all. If you don't happen to have a UXG Pro, you will need to SSH into this switch and this AP manually and provision them to the controller manually. Um, we will cover how to do that in a separate video, um, but that's that's a complete setup using a UXG Pro, a US8 150 watt switch and a UAPAC light. So we can adopt both of those now. So adopt device and adopt the AP. So those are adopting. It'll take a few minutes to sort itself out. 
So everything else online, everything's adopted in the Unified Controller. I've got three devices connected, UXG Pro, US8 150-watt switch, and an AC light access point. We're going to set up a, a new VLAN, show you how to do that. Also a guest a guest SSID, along with rate limiting, and putting that guest network in a separate VLAN that's isolated from your main network. So we're going to run through a few things in the Unified Controller first. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure everything is up to date. So where it says here, update status is up to date. Um, if there's an update available, say update um, or download now, and then the the device will go off and download the software automatically from UI Ubiquiti servers, and then your the device will go offline and come back online in a few minutes. Uh, so as it happens, all of my devices on this controller are actually up to date. Uh, that's fine. The UAP AC devices, the access points, will actually they know based on MAC address which port on the switches they're connected to. Um, so you can just about see here that the uplink for this AP is the US8 150 watt switch. Uh, it says number one, number one port. So you go back to the switch and have a look on the ports. It says port one, and it says downlink is the UAP AC light, so it already knows that that device is plugged in. And it says how much power is drawing and that sort of thing, which is great. One thing to bear in mind, there isn't much difference between the icons. So I've got my iMac plugged into port five, but the, the POE icon is on. That just means the POE sensing is turned on. So don't worry that a device that isn't supposed to have POE is, is getting POE. Um, if there is POE being drawn, it will have a POE and then the wattage, uh, you'll just see there, just above the downlink icon, the downlink label, it will say the wat the wattage that the device is drawing. If there isn't any wattage, it just says POE plus. That just means the POE is off. Um, the icon uh, can be a little bit confusing. On the UXG Pro, uh, there's a few details. You can see the one IP address, the ISP it's picked up as well, uh, the, the connectivity type, so if it's 100 megabit or gigabit, or even 10 gigabit as well. And you can see which uplink is uplinking to the WAN, the WAN connection as well. Uh, and then port on the client sort of devices here, it sort of says that that's the next downlink that's connected, and that's our that's our POE switch. Got port uh, the port one is the WAN. You can also have a secondary WAN, um, so I'll share to set that up as well. And there's also a smart outlet on the UXG Pro. So on the EU version, there's an IEC connector, sort of like a a reverse kettle lead is what we call it. Uh, on the US version, there's a, just a standard uh, mains outlet socket on the back. So that, that's for plugging a modem in, and then you can um, turn off the power or do a modem power cycle. So I'm going to turn off mine. We're going to jump into settings. Uh, you can see right now I haven't got any Wi-Fi SSID set up, so I'm going to make myself a, a standard SSID for my client devices. So I'm going to have it as Hostify. Choose a password, and that's going to be on all access points. We do have a separate video on the channel where you can look at how to set up AP groups and limit specific SSIDs to different APs and different frequencies. There's a link in the top right hand corner for that video and also in the description down below. Uh, we can also go uh, and set the manual uh, settings, but we're going to leave everything on automatic. And we're going to click Add Wi Fi Network, and that's going to push it out to the access points we've got on our network. In this, in this particular instance, we've only got one AP. We're going to now make our guest network. So again, you come to Wi-Fi, create new, and we're going to have it this one called guest. And what you want to do is go to manual and then click hotspot portal. And what it does there, you see it removes the, the password option. Um, so that's the hotspot portal. We're going to go and set those details now. So we've got a guest SSID set up now. So we're going to click Wi-Fi network. Next thing you want to do to manage the guest portal is go to the hotspot portal tab. In previous versions of Unify, this was in a profiles or hotspot section in, in the main setting. There is now a hotspot manager tab. Uh, it gives you the all the guests that are currently connected as well as the landing page. So the landing page has been, had a bit of a revamp. So we're going to leave this as Unify guest Wi-Fi. Welcome to the Unify guest hotspot. And this is powered by Unify. That is the, actually the old logo, which is a bit weird. Um, but we can come here and set the authentication. Uh, so there are a number of things you can do. You can do Facebook Wi-Fi. Um, you can have users use their Facebook account to log in, have a password, have payments, or just no password. You've got settings as well. You've got the landing page. You can set, you can have it have it to show HTTPS, encrypted URL, secure portal as well. Uh, and then you can say authorization access. And this means that the if you've got a local cloud key on site, this means that those, those users can access the cloud portal uh, to log in. So I'm, I'm happy with this. It's It's got no password, I just want people to be able to click a button to log in and we could have some marketing information here, we could have if we're running a coffee shop on for example, we could have some information about our Twitter page or Instagram page, but I'm gonna leave things as they are. 
we go back to the settings tab so our guest our guest SSID is, is using the hotspot portal to log in and guests will be um, isolated from our, our main networks however the the limiting that unified does by default what we've actually done here so far is have the guest SSID uh, on the same subnet as our main network which we don't, we don't want to do um, at the moment the unify APs will do some limiting for us but it's not uh, the most advanced thing um, so we want to come and make a new VLAN so at the moment we've got one VLAN and that's our management network our main network and our guest network what I would do is leave this subnet here as 192.168.1 and have that as our management VLAN. So what that means is our UXG Pro, our switches, APs, if we've got cameras and things, we'd leave those on the on the default um, management network for unified devices. What I want to do is make a new, a new network. I'm going to call this um, sort of admin or uh, users. The root is going to be the UXG Pro. I'm going to have this auto scale feature turned off. Uh, I'm going to have it called VLAN 2. And just for some uh, sort of tips or what most people do, um, your third octet, so your IP here, after the so this uh, number here, the third section, that's called a third octet, I would have that the same as the VLAN ID for some sort of better management. Uh, we'll give it as a slash 24. VLAN ID 2, I'm going to add that new network. And we can go ahead and change the... The network for this one so I've got our main user SSID called hostify change the network to the users network and press apply changes and that's going to have our users separated from our management network which is quite a good uh, best practice I'm going to go back to networks and make another another VLAN I'm going to call this one guest auto scale turned off I'm going to leave it as what it's what it suggested 192.168.3 it suggested um, the VLAN ID of three. Again, we're going to click add, and that's going to be fine. And then go back to the Wi-Fi, go back to the guest SSID, and we can have that as the guest, the guest uh, VLAN. So that's some sort of segregation between your main network, your management network, and your guest network. Uh, if you want to have some more uh, segregation between them, we could put some firewalls in to say any connections out coming from the guest network to our main network just block them so we can we can make those now so we're going to come down to firewall and security so we've got all these new features that are in unify uh, os3 which is quite a quite a nice feature now i've got ad blocking um, and there's also some wire guard features now we're going to make a new firewall rule so we're going to make a new uh, group for our guest network and if you remember our guest network is 192.168.3 uh, slash 24 so we're going to make a new group called guest it's going to be an IPv4 address subnet, and we're going to do 192.168.3.0/24. I'm going to apply changes, and we're going to back to firewall, make a new entry in our uh, firewall. I'm going to say anything coming from the, it's anything destined for the guest out. So guest out, uh, we're going to say um, block guest to LAN. I'm going to say drop all their protocols. The source type will be the guest, and then the destination will be the user's network. What we could have, what we could have done actually, is is do do it by network. So um, you didn't need to actually make the group. We could just do blocking the guest to the the user's network. So we're going to apply changes. And that's going to restrict. So if by chance someone knows the subnet we're using for our main network, we can drop all traffic from guest to that main network. Next thing we might want to do for our guest network is rate limit the users. So at the moment, if we've got 100 megabit per second up and down, they're going to get whatever's left, um, or sort of best service. So what we might want to do is limit that network to 10 by 10 or 10 by 5. So we're going to come down to profiles, and it's now called Wi-Fi QoS in uh, more recent versions of Unify. So you can see here we've got a default uh, profile. That's for our main network. We're going to make a new profile this is going to be called guest and we can do it by megabit per second and we're going to say 10 down and uh, 5 up we're going to apply changes and what we want to do now is go back to our, that guest ssid and we can assign that profile to that to that network so back on our guest uh guest ssid now we've got this option for wi-fi qos we're going to turn that on 
and then we're going to select one of the new profiles which is guest and press apply changes and now anyone connected to that guest network will be capped at 10 down and 5 up it will be just slightly below um, so it might be just 9.8 down and maybe 4.9 4.8 up um, but it's that's just with some overhead the last thing we're going to look at is backing up your unified controller so if your unified controller is hosted with hostify we do nightly backups and you can access those anytime you want from app.hostify.com. However, you can do manual backups and you can download those for safekeeping yourself. So if you go to settings, system, and there's a backup section here. So there's backups are stored locally on the actual server and are not synchronized to a UI account. So it's a bit different to how backups work on the Cloud Key, Gen2 Plus, the UMVR, the UDMSC, that sort of thing. So Unify itself, by default, would do an automatic backup daily and you can download these files manually and then you can restore them if something happens to the controller and also again if you're with the hostify you can this is all done automatically for you and if your server does seem to have some problems or you need to go back to a different version you can download a backup from our portal at app.hostify.com one more thing is with the uxg pro and usg you can do load balancing and failover so with the ux with the usg i don't think you can actually do load balancing but with the uxg pro the feature was added just recently so on this particular UXG, I've only got um, one WAN plugged in, but if you had two WANs plugged in, it would have a secondary WAN active, and you can choose to distribute it, um, so 1% up to 99%. Uh, it would even do an automatic speed test, um, and you can choose which ports are which um, are doing which which functions. So you can have SFP as your WAN 1, SFP as your LAN, and then a, as a backup 4G connection, you could have uh, the Ethernet um, for WAN 2. That's, that's all possible from the GUI. That's been a look at how to set up Ubiquiti Unify in 2023 and getting your devices adopted to Hostify. If you need any more help, have a look at Hostify.com and contact our team for any support and queries at support at Hostify.com and you can contact us on Twitter at Hostify underscore net. Thank you for watching this video. My name's Alex and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>